What's going on guys, my name is Elden Aero and welcome to episode number 85 of my Leicester City career mode on FIFA 15. That means that we should get to 100 episodes before Christmas at this current rate of, uh, of progress and uploading videos, which is pretty exciting. Like, I, I don't know if it even means anything, but I just think 100 episodes of a series before Christmas is incredibly impressive and the number of views and likes and everything that this series gets continues to impress me like week after week and everything. So thank you very much for all the support so far. I want to say earlier on in this video as always on a Saturday if this video hits 600 likes before about half past seven this evening uh, I will upload episode 86 around that time so that is the target 600 likes if this does hit it Um one thing I wanted to say as well you're looking at the squad report on the screen obviously Um I figured out a couple of things about the squad reports and the way that they're done like the way that the players ratings progress and I know like I talk about this an awful lot but see the mental stats tend to go up as long as the player is happy and in good form the mental stats go up and for some players that's the only thing that ever goes up like Julian Brand is a great example of that he's not really progressed very well at all since we signed him to the point where I would say he's being affected by the potential glitch because that's just what seems likely to me like his growth has been incredibly slow despite the fact that he's played consistently and played pretty well as well uh, but it's only his mental stats that ever go up and that leads to his ratings increase and I think that when a player is glitched that's the only way to actually get them to advance is their mental like if you look at him here he's gone up by one rating to 76 it's the first hint of progress that we've seen in him uh, since we've signed him really like he's been incredibly slow and just hasn't really gone anywhere but he's actually played quite well and it's only his mental stats that go up so I don't really know what the reason behind it is I'd love to actually understand fully uh, what it is about this game that makes the players grow and stuff because um it's a little bit of an enigma at the moment. It's inconsistent, much like real life is, though. So it, it's really hard to pinpoint what specifically the problem is. But we're going into this game against Newcastle United at St. James's Park. Jack Grealish gets a start on the right-hand side of midfield. I don't really know why. I just felt like giving him a game because um, I was thinking a lot about how slow some players have been to progress and how it's frustrated me. Um, and I just thought maybe if I give Jack Grealish a fair go, he will actually start to go somewhere. Uh, sadly, it doesn't really look like happening at all, though. Uh, another Another thing I wanted to say in this game, as you can see in the 34th minute, uh, Vialba gets in ahead of Yanga and Biwa and he actually manages to finish to get a goal, which is kind of a rare sight at the moment. He's not really been so good for the goals this season. But, um,. I, I mentioned in the last episode, like, I kind of had a discussion with you, even though it was a one-way discussion, obviously, because you don't talk back to me, but I read some of the comments as well. A couple of people agreed with me, but I was talking about the patch and how I haven't really played the same since the patch has come out. Like, my matches have been uh, kind of boring and just devoid of any highlights and stuff, and I don't really understand why that is, and I was trying to figure out why, so I came up with the, the theory that maybe it's the patch, because um, I was watching the Penthes' stream the other night uh, when he was streaming Ultimate Team, and he was saying that the patch makes his gameplay a little bit different and I found myself agreeing with pretty much everything he said um, but I wonder if it's all in my head and I'm actually just playing worse because of different reasons like I'm quite busy at the moment that's why there was only three episodes during the week um, I don't really have the time to put into this game like the same as I did before uh, but we come away from St. James's Park with a 1-0 victory in what was literally the worst match I've ever played on FIFA 15 like I made substitutions in the 66th minute that never even came onto the pitch it was just unbelievably dull and it's just something that I noticed was that since the patch has come out the AI's passing has been a lot more consistent now their pass accuracy has actually gone down but the rate at which they pass the ball has definitely gone up and I think it has something to do with the patch and I think it's down to the fact that the patch was made um, to patch up that glitch where on ultimate team you could start kick off and run straight down the middle and um, so if the players are reacting a little bit more heavily to that it means that they've changed the way that they are cohesively in the midfield so that would kind of point out why there's more passing going on I think um, now that might be all nonsense but that's just my theory behind it but we're going into our next game this is at the King Power Stadium against Celtic this is in the Champions League. You got to look at the group table before the match kicked off, and uh, that hints to the fact that we very much have to win this game. And Vialba set us off on the right foot with a goal in the 12th minute. Sorry, Celtic, but uh, I did let you win at Celtic Park. That's not true. So I did see a comment saying that I let Celtic win. I honestly didn't. Like I, I have no interest in doing that. I have no uh, 
quite kind of like tribal instinct to uh, make my football team win on a on a video game that uh, that just doesn't apply to me at all. But in the 21st minute, Origi came down the left hand side of the pitch where he's been playing incredibly well. He plays the ball into Koyate, providing the assist for the second goal of this game. Just 21 just 21 minutes in, which was uh, which was fantastic because I was a little bit worried due to the fact that I have definitely been playing noticeably worse in my opinion. Um, and our Champions League campaign has not been very good. We were without a win until our fourth game. Uh, which is just not a good sign at all. So we need to accumulate these points quick and fast, uh, which is the same. Th those are synonyms. I don't know why I said those together. But, um, you know, we, we just can't afford to slip up anymore um, in this group because we need to get out of it in order to progress. Otherwise, my time at Leicester City has been a waste um, and there will have been no progression from this season, really. But uh, a shot from Barigder in the 52nd minute did trouble Jack Butland. And then six minutes later, Koyate surrenders possession to Lee Griffiths, who fancied his chances from distance. And that actually wasn't that much of a... I don't even know why I put that in. It looked a lot closer at the time, I suppose. But, um... In the 64th minute, we came bombing forward with Tom Ince on the ball. Now, he gets into the box, and look at this. Virgil van Dijk fouls him because I saw that the linesman had his flag up for a throw-in, so that meant that van Dijk made no contact with the ball. Or, sorry, a goal kick, but that's a foul. Like, I don't know how the referee doesn't call that and doesn't, like, award me a penalty or a free kick or whatever it was. Maybe it was because it was directly on the line and it interfered with the game's ability to decide. I, I really don't know. That baffles me a little bit. But in the 78th minute, we came forward, and a really nice passing movement, kind of like a rugby movement going forward, uh, sees Vialba get in for his second goal of the game and I believe his first brace uh, in, a, in a good few weeks in, in uh, uploaded videos honestly like Vialba's just not really being his usual self and it would be really good if we could rekindle that kind of form that he had because there was a time where he would go into every game and pretty much score like the number of games where Vialba didn't score last season is like four like <laughs> you know it's, it's a very low number but in the 89th minute he sacrificed his opportunity to get a hat-trick by passing the ball into Bertrand Traore who gets his first goal in the Champions League campaign for us and that really did wrap this game up and and put the final nail in Celtic's coffin and uh, and guarantee the win for us and guarantee that we've got a much better chance of progressing from the group now. Tom Ince had a chance in the 90th minute. He's been a lot more involved in the games as well. And I actually think that um, if what I'm saying about the patch is right, they've kind of sacrificed the strikers runs through the middle in order to make uh, wingers run through a lot faster. I don't know if that's what I've, if that's true or not. But uh, here's a look at our group now that we won that game. And as you can see, we are in second place. And if we win our remaining two games against Borussia Dortmund, uh, at home and Sporting Lisbon away, then we will top the group. So that is a pretty good prospect for us. Yassine Benzia picked up an injury in the match against Celtic, which is unfortunate, but he will only miss nine days, which isn't too much. And uh, we go into our next game. This is against Southampton at the King Power Stadium. Southampton held us to a one-all draw at this ground on the final day of the the season before last or last season I can't honestly remember but uh, I remember it being a very very difficult game so I did set up um, I don't know to try and take the game to Southampton here they had Steve McQueen play and I don't know what his first name is but the fact that his name is S McQueen means that I'm obviously going to call him that Fabian Delft starts in midfield for them as well uh, who was obviously involved in the James Ward Prowse deal to take him to the King Power Stadium but in the second minute of this game Ward Prowse himself actually had a shot it was deflected it went just wide of the goalkeeper's post but uh, it could have caused him some problems on another day and in the fifth minute Southampton came forward with Steve McQueen on the right hand side of the pitch his cross finds Graziano Pelle who gives the visitors the lead and this is his final season uh, in the game because I actually looked to sign him like I know he's very old he's like 34 now and he's retiring but uh, his physical stats like are still beastly you know like he is kind of a god when it comes to heading the ball and that's uh, exemplified by that goal there uh, and then in the 10th minute we came forward with Huddleston finding Vialba who plays it into Ward Prowse, the former Southampton player, who gets into a great position uh, but sadly can only uh, hit it straight at the goalkeeper from that point of view and then the goal and then the uh, Southampton defence clears it. Then we came forward two minutes later with uh, Ward Prowse once again being involved in the build up as he was throughout this game. His pass uh, leads to a chance for Danny Ings who gets into a good position but sees his shot go just wide with his left foot. Then we came forward again in the 36th minute with Andrew Robertson on the ball as he looks to pick out a pass he finds Brand on the left hand side of midfield who plays it into Hector Vialba who does quite well to get around the defender and get into a great position to shoot and I couldn't believe that that chance fell in the back of the net because I hit it uh, hopeful that it would go flying into the top right hand corner and when I saw it rolling along the ground I kind of um, I despaired a little bit but uh, looking at the replay it did take a bobble and that's why the goalkeeper struggled to get it but in the 57th minute Southampton came forward with Fabian Delph finding Steve McQueen his shot was uh, blocked by Jack Butland and eventually we tried to get it away 
we failed to do so and Dusan Tadic hits his shot off the post and thankfully we scramble it clear then two minutes later they came forward once more with Osvaldo in a great position as his shot goes just wide of Butland's post but a really really good chance for him um, and then in the and then seven minutes after that Ward Prowse picks up the ball uh, tries to evade the tackle of Tadic can't do so Tadic with some great backtracking to get the ball to Ryan Bertrand who plays the ball into Bruce Willis um, who's in a great position as well and his shot goes well wide uh, of Butland's post into the side net I think it actually went out for a corner but uh, Bruce Willis and Steve McQueen both playing for Southampton it's good to see that they're supporting the Actors Guild that's how the game ends a one-all draw but I'll take that against Southampton and here's why if you see the league table we're still unbeaten and I'm pretty happy with that we've conceded 10 goals in 11 games though and that's something that I really do want to rectify I've said it a few times I don't really have any strategy for actually going about changing that being the case but um, nonetheless it would be really good to tighten up the defense and just learn how to not concede as many goals but that is the end of this episode hopefully you guys have enjoyed it if you did please do leave a like if we get 600 of them episode 86 will be uploaded at half past seven uh, in London time London Lisbon and Dublin time um, I don't know why I say the things that I say that's the end of this video hopefully you enjoyed it I've been Elden Hero fuck this